Good morning, girls and guys, everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am back again with another video for us to take a look at and inspect, take a look at retrospectively, and yeah, you know, just talk about my art process in general. And, you know, hopefully we could learn a thing or two from this particular illustration. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, but before I talk about where the idea came from, or I could talk real quick about that. Um, but before I talk about the main um, illustration, I, I think it's really important for me to talk about this particular one that we're taking a look at at the screen right now. Because obviously it's a different illustration than the first one. So yeah, um, this particular illustration is obviously not the same. Well, kind of sort of the same as the first one. Um, but we could talk real quick about what's going on in the screen right now. So what's going on in the screen right now is my 30 minute entry, 30 minute speed paint entry into the daily spit paint group um, in Facebook. So uh, for the ones who's not familiar, daily spit paint group is a group in Facebook and every day they, they post prompts for us to choose from. And draw from and yeah you get to have just 30 minutes to do your illustration no more than that uh, and that's one of the hard rules of the group um, so yeah it's a really fun way of warming up you, you know in your day and starting out your illustration journey for the day basically <laughs> you know so you just a great way to warm up so Anyways, the prompt for that day was Forgotten God, and I kid you not, that's a really cool sounding phrase. Um, so yeah, but before I go on about that particular prompt, I guess we can talk about the process real quick on <laughs> what's going on in front of us, because this thing's not going to go on for very long. Basically, I, you know, laid down my sketch, I laid down some of my colors using the random mech brush uh, set to vary its hue a little bit and then I combined those two layers and smudged everything so I could get a paste paint to do my late to to do my detailing on and now I've basically have started my detailing process so you can see real quick that I'm trying to detail this guy kind of trying to harmonize all this random color noise that I have and then now I'm going through the foreground kind of adding some form shadows on that structure to the left as well as the one on the right and eventually I'm just gonna delineate my forms delineate my lines um, basically I sharpen my lines just to just so that my forms are a little bit readable and then yeah I that's basically my detailing process. Uh, this whole 30 minute endeavor is really almost complete. Um, I'm basically just working on the focal point of the illustration, which is of course the Forgotten God, this dude over here with the wings. Um, really cool concept that I came up with in my head. I'm not really sure where the idea came from. It just kind of just randomly came in my head. But it's really cool though, you know, to think of a guy with wings um, to represent the guy as the forgotten god. And then yeah, I'm kind of just making things sharper a little bit and I think this is it. That's done. This is the 30 minute version of the prompt uh, forgotten god. And then eventually I'm going to... Um, get on blender because what i'm going to be doing in blender is kind of prototyping the scene here i am in blender basically uh, basically what i'm about to do is to try and recreate this whole scene i moved a lot of things around obviously obviously i'm gonna keep the focal character or the main character very very off center not only am i not gonna keep him in the center i'm also gonna change his scale so he's going to be very, very small. I mean, you have you kind of saw the illustration at the very beginning. Uh, the Forgotten God is just one small, tiny little speck. Almost a tiny little speck. Not quite that tiny, obviously. 
But obviously he was so far in the distance, you could barely tell uh, what's going on. And then ev everything else that's in focus is basically just a foreground area. And then you get this nice big empty space of a sky um, that the forgotten god stands in front of, you know. So it kind of, in a way, all this empty space kind of just leads the eye to looking at... Uh, the character, the focal point. So that's basically the way I'm setting up the scene because after I did the 30 minute daily spit paint, you know, I just started seeing compositions in my head and where I could take the illustration. And lo and behold, I found my perfect illustration, which is what we're taking a look at right now. And it's such a cool composition, too. Just I absolutely, absolutely love this composition uh, in my head. Um, and I really love this illustration too and how it ended up um, forming eventually uh, which I could talk some more about that but uh, real quick I guess I could talk about um, the partial inspiration for the idea of my illustration so when I got the prompt Forgotten God I didn't really kind of have an image of what I wanted to do. I don't think um, this was basically six months ago when I did this. So this was in March 27. So like about six months ago was when I started this whole illustration. And if I'm trying to remember exactly what happened that day, I think I got the image of the guy with the wings to kind of denote like some form of forgotten God. Um, but the setting of the place which is really what I ended up going after um, for. I mean, you look at the illustration, really the illustration really is more about the environment rather than the God, because the God is just such a small little speck in in the space, you know. Um, but, uh, oh man, this is such an interesting little composition right here that we're taking a look at. We're taking a look at me kind of trying to do this whole swirl thing on the ground. I really initially wanted to have this on the floor where there's a bunch of swirl patterns on the floor. But eventually I ended up ditching all of that um, just in favor of simplicity because I was really trying to do this whole speed paint thing in the first place anyways. Um, so I totally ditched the floor patterns. Um, and then what we're taking a look at is me sculpting out the walls. I basically just sculpted some form of the walls, um, just to use as a backdrop, which eventually ended up becoming like a really cool future feature or, you know, aspect of the illustration that I didn't really plan on in the first place i mean i was just kind of just messing around right here you know i didn't really know what i was doing and then i kind of saw it in my head and i was just like sure why not we could play with this and then it ended up becoming like a really big deal towards the end but really what i really wanted these forms for was just to cast shadow um to cast a shadow on the floor and i I just now realized that I actually placed a forgotten god in one of the um basically in the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds create this four focal points, and I just realized that the forgotten god is in one of those focal points instead of the bottom right. That's a very pleasing composition, honestly, I would have to say. Now I'm doing the lighting trying to get my lighting situation going on and I think I really needed to move the light around I don't really work with Eevee very much I'm not very comfortable with Eevee so that was really interesting for me to see myself to watch me mess around with Eevee because I'm not very good with Eevee versus the Cycles render engine. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I guess that render is done and I basically imported everything into Krita so that I have this render that I could base my sketch out of. Um, so yeah. 
Man, this was such a cool illustration. I just have to say, I just really love how all of the little things in this illustration just came together. It was really nice. But anyways, going back to the original conversation that I originally wanted to talk to you about. So, uh, I guess, you know, trying to think back what happened, I think I did see an image of the guy with the wings because I wasn't really sure if I saw that image or not if I saw an image of a guy with wings um or if I thought of it or if I didn't think about it I, I don't know where it came from is what I'm just trying to get at but I do know where the idea of the setting came from this whole idea of this really surreal looking place came from um N.K. Jemisin's uh, Inheritance Trilogy. It's a very, very cool sci-fi book that came out like way back in 2010, 2012, somewhere around that time. So it's almost a decade ago when she wrote it or when it came out. And in that series, there's basically this uh, idea of a floating kingdom of some sort. Um, I'm really fuzzy on the details because it's been so long since I read the book. But anyway, so when I got the prompt Forgotten God, um, I don't think that I was initially thinking of a scenario similar to the Floating Kingdom in N.K. In Jemison's Inheritance Trilogy. I think I might have seen the image of the guy with wings, essentially. And, you know, just to place him in some form of setting, I just randomly thought of this place. But what I do remember, I mean, that was... Uh, that was a 30 minute one where I just randomly place the guy with wings in some <laughs> random made up environment. I I'm not sure. I think I was just going with the flow, honestly. But what I do remember was when I finished that 30 minute speed paint and I saw the setting, saw the environment. That's when I saw N.K. Jemison in my head, the floating kingdom, you know, uh, scenario in my head. And once I saw it, I'm like, wow, this has the potential for a really great composition. And so that's what I ended up building in Blender. You know, I ended up building this very complicated set in Blender um, to kind of denote that idea in my head. Um, now, initially, I didn't really know what the whole set was going to look like. I knew that I wanted a platform of some sort. I knew that I wanted a form on the left and on the right to cast interesting shadows on the ground, right? I knew that I wanted those, but I didn't expect to draw this whole sci-fi looking um, environment. Like that just came out of nowhere, you know? I mean, I did the sculpt on the walls or on the wall forms simply because I was trying to do this whole swirl pattern thing that I didn't even eventually end up employing in an illustration. Um, I mean, you could see I sketched it out on the ground, but eventually I took them all out. Um, but yeah, when I sculpted swirls on the walls, I was just trying to do this whole swirl thing. But then when I imported the image onto Krita and I was like doing my sketch I just ended up randomly doing this mechanical looking thing which honestly is just perfect you know um this mechanical looking things in combination with this guy with wings that honestly feels like a fantasy setting more so than a sci-fi setting you know I those two combinations just kind of just clicked. And so when I started working on this illustration, like at this point, right around where we're what we're looking at right now, this is the point where I started to get really excited about this particular illustration because I knew where it was going. And I knew that I kind of had something here that I didn't expect to happen in the first place, you know, and so I was really excited about it. But what the real finishing touch this illustration was, was when I added the photo from uh, Pixels. So Pixels is a great place, there it is, this photo that I added. This is a photo by Pixabay. Uh, Pixabay is a stock photo site. Uh, every now and then they do release 
uh, public domain photos, and this is one of the ones that they release onto pixels.com. Um, it's a great photo resource, right? Pixels.com is all free to use. Anyway, so Pixels released this photo, and this photo was just perfect to go along with this whole illustration. Like, I don't know how much more perfect it could be. <laughs> Everything about this whole thing just, you know, it was all just an accident of errors of sort where I was just like, I was just messing around doing a bunch of things. I didn't really know what I had in mind initially. But then when I started doing my sketches and doing my drawings, you know, my brain kind of led me to all these different places that really isn't really all that odd for me because I really I mean I draw mechanical things all the time I draw spiky things it's like one of my favorite things to to draw randomly but I didn't expect to do it on this illustration which is the point I was trying to make because I was really trying to go more for a fantasy setting rather than a sci-fi setting but the fact that I ended up combining those two genres was just I think it was just absolutely cool so but yeah but I just love this illustration <laughs> but anyways um so now that I got done talking about like where the idea came from and my love for how things came about with this particular illustration I guess I could talk about the process real quick so uh in the process obviously I did the 3d um set up so I could get a 3d render um the 3D render doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be detailed. I just did work in Blender for like an hour just to get that 3D render. And really that 3D render just serves as a background for me to draw my sketches. And it's so awesome to be working with 3D simply because it helps me figure out where my perspective right away. I don't have to troubleshoot perspective all that much. And it helps me a lot with lighting too. And so really that's what I use 3D for. I basically just use Blender just to help me set up my illustration. And as soon as it's set up, I do my sketch on top of it, which is obviously what I did. I sketch on top of it. And then uh, I did all my detailed sketch on top of it. And then after that, I did my quick coloring thing again using the random mech brush. Uh, basically use a very limited palette just so that I won't go crazy with colors because colors is one of my weaknesses um, and then as soon as I get all this color variation I basically combine my sketch layer together with my color layer uh, and then kind of smudge things around just so that I could get a base paint same thing again same thing pro same process that I did for the 30 minute speed paint is the same process that I'm applying I'm applying for this much longer speed paint I think this one was around five hours which is really the maximum time I give myself for any speed paints anything above five hours I don't consider a speed paint anymore so I really try to limit my work to five hours and under um, so this is one of the much longer ones obviously because I think I hit the five hour mark pretty much right when I finished this um, but yeah, but anyway, so I'm basically blending things around and then as soon as I get this base paint, then I start working on my details. Uh, and that's what you're going to be watching me do in the next few minutes.
basically I've begun my detailing process again kind of like what I did with the 30 minute one except obviously like I mentioned I'm doing this for my five hours speed paint and again you know I'm delineating my shapes uh, basically making my edges sharper so that my shapes are re more readable um, and again I accentuate the shadows which is basically darken the shadows a little bit more if they need a little bit more darkening and then yeah I add highlights and so I basically repeat this three-step process all throughout areas of the illustration uh, in this particular case I didn't need to worry about the background sky because that was from the photo from pixels by pixabay um, and the ground for the most part is pretty much done since I decided to discard the you know swirl pattern that I originally was going for since I decided to discard that idea everything just got simplified with the floor I mean it's pretty much done and then uh, and then obviously I'm working on the chair slash uh, pet dog that is in us on the chair right now so I'm kind of you know making that readable uh, making that more obvious and there's a dog just hanging out chilling and the dog is like a fantasy dog of some sort obviously because it has a horn kind of like a unicorn but it's a pet dog uh, and then now I'm gonna work on the sci-fi structures so yeah um, which is basically just me just detailing it and again um, going back to the whole process of this whole illustration I just thought that it was just really cool how everything kind of just came about you know when I got the prompt for daily spit paint I guess I did see the image of the guy with the wings I'm not sure I guess again I'm like really fuzzy on that particular part but what I do remember was when I finished a 30 minute illustration I saw the environment he was in and that's when I saw N.K. Jemisin in my head and when I saw N.K. Jemisin's Inheritance Trilogy's Floating Kingdom in my head I set it up in Blender and again I was trying to do this whole fantasy setting initially but then when I imported that 3D render onto Krita and I saw the potential for this sci-fi spiky looking <laughs> uh thing of some sort uh structure of some sort i was just like oh let's go with that because that's cool and so all these little things that was just kind of like me going with the flow and it just kind of added on to itself that i just thought the whole process was cool <laughs> it's one of those rare times where Everything in the illustration just kind of came together without me thinking too much about it, you know. It was just a real flow with this whole illustration. That's what I love about it. I mean, like the whole chair thing too and how that came about was pretty natural. I mean, I added the chair initially so that, you know, there's a point of reference for the scale since I knew that the foreground character or the main character, not the foreground character, but the main character was going to be so far out into the background, right? That he was going to be so far out into the horizon that I knew he was going to be small that I wanted something of like human size just to kind of indicate what the scale of these forms that we're looking at and so that's where the chair came about i didn't really expect to put you know this fantasy dog on the chair i didn't really expect to design the chair like the way it is which is really cool it's like victorian baroque style i, I really like that chair i think that chair is pretty cool i want that one <laughs> for my own chair because it's so cool but yeah so and like all the little garnish that I added on the chair too was very cool. I added this sort of blanket that kind of hangs in one of the armrests and all the books and this water slash maybe wine slash glass of some sort and then this scrolls that's on the ground. So it looks like, you know, this forgotten god is like some form of heavy reader or something like he likes to read a lot or something. I, I'm... 
not really sure what that connotes but i do love just little details that i added on to it so but yeah it was just all just flow <laughs> i just i can't help but stress that that point because i just really really love it um there are, there's a few things that is kind of questionable questionable about it um it was raised that the floor was too pink uh, a gems one of uh my friends in the sketch net community that i'm part of a roman sketch zone community that i'm part of in this core channel he mentioned that why is the sun casting a uh, pink glow you know and originally i kind of thought yeah maybe i needed to get rid of the pink but i really like the pink there because I have never really thought of pink as a good contrast to cyan, but for some odd reason, I really like the contrast of the pink with the cyan in this particular illustration. Now, my mind might change in a year or two later, you know, maybe a year or two later after, after, and then I take a look at this and whatnot, I might actually end up agreeing with uh agents in thinking that the sun is casting like way too pink a light or like the pink is off or whatnot but honestly i think it works very well but he mentioned anyways going back to what agents mentioned he mentioned something about like will the sun shouldn't be casting that pink of a glow or whatnot and for it not to affect everything else but then it, it could also be just that the floor is just pink <laughs> and it's not that the sun is casting pink you know um so there was a slight, you know, conversation about that slash argument about it and whether or not the floor should stay pink. But eventually I ended up just sticking my guns and just saying, hey, I'm just going to keep it because I really like the contrast. I mean, I really do. Um, I've been accused of liking pink too much. I don't know how that came about. It used to be 10 years ago that my favorite color was orange and I did orange and everything. But now apparently I'm in a pink period. I don't know how that came about. Um, there was also a green period <laughs> in some form, in some moment in time. Um, but now I'm apparently I'm all about pink. So yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm just leaving it as is because I really think composition-wise it works well. I love the sky. Uh, I love how those clouds kind of point towards the foreground character or towards the main character. I initially wanted all those vertical lines or the those clouds to be going the other way because i have those spiky antennas pointing to the guy initially and i thought that was too obvious if i have the clouds kind of pointing towards the guy too but then in the end i decided that you know what it's really best if we have both the spiky antennas and the clouds kind of pointing towards this guy because then it just it just it's more obvious that way you know it's more obvious that there's some form of character in the foreground some guy with some wings and he looks like he's about to take off or something you know so that's pretty cool that there's some form of a narrative aspect to that right but yeah um i don't know what else to say about this illustration i just really really love how this came about um it's not as polarizing as some of my other speed paints that I've done in the past few months. Because some of the speed paints I've done in the past few months are thoroughly questionable. I really like it, but my friends are like, dude, what's wrong with your brain? <laughs> you need to get it checked. You know, and there's always arguments and what's good and what's not. Sometimes my colors are really off. On the last video, I talk about how my colors are very, very off on, on those hover bikes. And so there was a conversation about that being off. And eventually I did agree with them. I'm like, yeah, you're right on that one. Uh, so I did some edits on my illustration to kind of just go along with them. But this is one of those few illustrations where I was just so happy with it that I'm just like, I don't care about your critiques. I'm keeping it as this because I really still like it. Amazing enough, even six months down the road, you know, I couldn't believe that I still like it. And I couldn't believe I took out those antennas. Wow, I totally forgot that I took those out. Which makes sense because those antennas were kind of redundant. Because you already have those clouds pointing towards the guy anyway. So, But anyways, 
Um, yeah, I very, I very, very much appreciate my sketchzone.net friends slash rem and sketchzone friends because they do help point things out that I don't really see. Because sometimes when you draw, you just get zoned out that you forget um, that you don't see some of the errors, you know. So I, I really appreciate that they help me out a lot in figuring out errors in my illustrations. Um, but this is just one of those few ones where I'm just like, nope, I'm gonna do what I want to do with this one because I really do like how this came out. I just think this is just a very cool speed paint. So yeah, I'm going to keep it as is. But yeah, this illustration is almost done. I'm obviously just putting in my final touches uh, on that background. And yep, it's done. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.